Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Imagine being an adult with so little coping skills that such a minor correctable stressor makes you become completely unhinged. I wonder about people like this. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. No, I can't let you into your room. I'm a regional technician for a global company. This is exceptionally mild and probably wouldn't have posted it, but this guy was amusing. Staying at a Schmyatt with my husband, who's in his company uniform as we're here for a work thing. Going up to our room, there's a gentleman trying to get into one that we have to pass to get to ours. His frustrated eye falls on my husband. I'll be all capsing because the gentleman seemed incapable of speaking at anything lower than Foghorn. You, you work here. No, sir, I'm a guest. Oh. He turns back to the door. We move past him. Where you go? You help me. I don't work here. You said you do. Open the door. I said I don't, and I can't help you. You call me liar? You said you work here. Give me key. Go down to the front desk. They can help you. You, here now. You, get me key. You, open door. Dude, unless that door has an issue with its water intake or steam pressure, I can't help you. Go to the front desk. No, you help now. The man literally stomped his foot. Stomped his foot. I may have giggled at this point. He started turning purple, but my husband just hustled me into our room. There was some more loud talking in an Eastern European language I couldn't identify, but then it went quiet. No idea if he got his key or not. I bet you felt silly when it turned out the door did have an issue with its steam pressure. And our second story. City said our front door was too rusty. Years ago, I was living with my cousin and her son, and we didn't live in the best neighborhood in our city. None of the houses looked nice at all. We basically lived in the hood. But one day, the city decided to try to gentrify our neighborhood to bring in more residents, and we had a very rusty front door. My cousin constantly got letters in the mail to either get a new door or paint over the rust or face a penalty. We didn't have a lot of money, so getting a new door wasn't an option for my cousin. She would constantly get letters from the city every week, it seemed like it. My cousin was fed up with being harassed by the city. My cousin and I went to Home Depot, and she bought the most flamboyant orange color you could find in the paint section. We decided to paint the front door that color. The city was trying to fight my cousin about it because it was obnoxious, but since we painted it, the city couldn't do anything about it. To this day, the door's still the color orange, and my cousin will still paint over it to make it look brand new. And our next story. Stop calling this number? Okay. I work in the public works department with the street resurfacing division for a large city in the U.S., roughly 500,000 people. And one of my responsibilities is responding to resident questions. When resurfacing residential streets, since most neighborhoods only have street parking, we ask all residents to park on a different street for the two days we need to work on the street. One for the old asphalt removal and one for laying down new asphalt. The consequence for not moving your vehicle is being towed. We notify the residents with a letter explaining we will be doing resurfacing and an invitation to a public meeting to answer any questions three months in advance of resurfacing, a letter one month in advance with the approximate dates of resurfacing, a letter two weeks in advance with the exact dates, and a letter that's a reminder one week in advance with the addition of physical signs placed on all streets to be resurfaced. All letters clearly state the expectations to move vehicles and the consequence for failing to do so, in addition to contact info for me to answer any questions. Today, when I arrived in the office, I had a voicemail from a lady who lives on, let's say, First Avenue, and her street was being resurfaced next week. She explained she'll be leaving for vacation Sunday and was wondering if she could leave her car parked on First Avenue while she was gone for a week. Well, it isn't the first and won't be the last time I get questions that have already been answered in the letters, but little did I know this time would be a special one. So I call her back to explain that she'll need to move her vehicle to a different street while she's on vacation, but when I call, she picks up and immediately hangs up. 
Okay, maybe she's busy. I'll call back later. 45 minutes later, I call again, and again she answers and immediately hangs up. An hour after the second call, I call again and she does the same thing. I'm annoyed that she won't even let it ring to let me leave a voicemail, but I certainly don't want her to come back from a vacation to an impounded vehicle, so I call her back again about 45 minutes after the third call. This time she answers and doesn't immediately hang up, but instead screams into the phone, Stop calling this number! Leave me the F alone or I will call the police! And then hangs up before I can get a word in. Okay, no problem, I'll stop calling. Enjoy your impounded car, B-word. And our last story. HOA against my old privacy fence. I've named several members of the board here who were specifically nasty to me. There were a total of eight on the other side of the table. And they were just glaring at me towards the end like I just spit in their coffee. We've got Soy Boy, who's a dude in his 50s that clearly was getting off at this small amount of authority. Karen Prime, who made a comment about my vegetation that was unwarranted and exaggerated after I told them I plan on building a newer version of my current fence. Decrepit Snake Karen, who's been nice to the point of annoying over the past 18 months or so I've lived here, for me to find out it was her who's been taking pictures and originally filed the complaint. And Admin Lady, who I have zero problems with, because she basically fed me the ammunition required to own these people. A few months back, I was cited for my six-foot privacy fence looking disorderly. It's a valid citation as the fence is 20 years old and I've wanted to fix it since the day I moved in two years ago. The only problem is that I'm recovering from a bankruptcy and I won't get approved for an equity loan or any loan really until January of 2025, which will be two years after the discharge. With the citation from earlier this summer, I replied that I was unable to pay for a new fence at this time and I asked for leniency until I could. They replied about a month later with a summons to a hearing over this issue, which happened today. In the couple of weeks I had to prepare for this, I reached out to several companies to get quotes for a fence exactly like the one I have now so that I could present them with a realistic cost and give a plan and just sort of hope they'd not find me. While I'm in the meeting telling them about these options, decrepit Snake Karen says they won't approve my style of fence, six foot privacy, and that's the majority of the problem. It took a minute for this to sink in what she would just said to me, and once it did, I had some questions. I asked, why then, on their original citation that I have, the option to repair this fence? This is the point in which Karen Prime effed up. She tells me that the HOA in 2005 mistakenly approved the previous homeowner's request to build a privacy fence, and that this HOA board would never approve such a fence. This led me to another question. Is my privacy fence grandfathered in with their decision? They said yes, but how are you supposed to fix this in 60 days if you don't have the money? I told them that I really like this type of fence and I don't want to replace it with one of their options. They told me they were only approving these three and four foot tall fences that use the wire screens in between the three cross posts. At this point, I asked them why they're citing me in the first place when a house in our neighborhood sold for 55 k over the asking price a few months back, which clearly indicated to me that no one is taking the condition of my fence into serious consideration before buying. This really pissed off Soy Boy, the lone male member of this board, who responded that we were done arguing about this and that the HOA will be taking action in 60 days by fining me $10 a day. That's about $3,600 over the year, so I'm thinking I'm just going to have to get effed at this point. That is until the admin lady at the end of the table pipes up that the maximum fine is capped at $900. This also takes a minute to register for me because these repairs for a fence that I don't want to own would probably cost between three and four k. Just realized I forgot to mention that the fence I want would cost just under 10 k. At this point, I tell them that $900 is cheaper than making their requested repairs for a fence I don't want. They kind of stare at me with a bit of malice, knowing that I have them by the balls. After about seven or eight awkward seconds, Soy Boy says that the board will find me accordingly in 60 days if I do not take action by then, and that I was dismissed. 
The admin lady pipes up again that they actually have to vote on this decision real quick, LMAO. Karen Prime seconds Soy Boy's motion to make that decision. They vote unanimously, and I leave smug as F, knowing that they'll have to look at my crappy fence for another year and some change, and then watch as I build another six-foot privacy fence when I'm eligible for an equity loan. Edit. I left out a lot of the actual arguments and dialogue that took place. I didn't want the post to get much bigger than it was, but if you're still in the mood for some juicy HOA drama, I got you. At one point, a lady that wasn't too hostile and seemed rather indifferent suggested that I just get rid of the fence and take the time I need in order to build one of their approved styles of fence. This is when I asked what those styles are, and they showed me some pics. There are a handful of houses in my neighborhood that have put up fences recently, and I now realize they're all obviously this style, and I personally think they look like crap. After seeing them and remembering my neighbor's fences, I tell them, I think those styles have zero character, and I don't want that kind of fence. Karen Prime cannot believe I just insulted her preferred choice of fence. At least I'm assuming it's her who chose these options because she definitely took it personally because she starts going off on a tangent about my lawn, telling me how she's been wanted to come chop down these various weeds for months. Heavily exaggerated the state of my lawn to the point of downright making crap up, she ends it with saying that my style of fence is unbecoming of the neighborhood. Another member who also wasn't too hostile basically tries to bargain with me at this point, saying that there doesn't need to be any action taken if I just agree to replace my fence with the one they like. I was talking with my brother shortly after this, essentially just to revel in my victory, and he suggested that I mail them to ask if they'll pay for half of the fence that they want me to build. If they say yes, I'd respond with, Never mind, just to salt the wound. If they say no, at least I get to bother them with a reminder that I'll be accepting the fine. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.